I was in the office in Kilmore Street when the earthquake struck and uh, it was violent. Uh, I dived under my desk immediately and looked around and I could see everyone else was under their desk as well. We went outside, the boss said, are you all okay? And we said yes, he said grab a camera and go. I was at home, um, I was on a day off, I wasn't working that day and I just hopped out of the shower and um, so I was standing in the doorway uh, on the way to the bedroom when it struck and um, sort of cowered in the, the doorway uh, as the shaking went on for quite a while. And I was in the makeup room um, watching Home and Away, I remember it vividly, and then the earthquake hit and everybody was screaming and I didn't know, you know, I'd just arrived from Auckland and I had no idea what was going on. It was all kind of, it was quite bizarre and quite a blur. It was like being gripped in the jaws of a rabid dog and just thrown from side to side and I, I vividly recall just a cacophony of noise. There wasn't anything specific, I, I don't recall specific things breaking, but after the earthquake was over, we suddenly looked around and it didn't appear there was anything left standing. Everything was emptied out. Our pantry was on the floor, all the cupboards were broken, the TV was smashed, stereo smashed, there was just nothing standing. And my wife was petrified. And, uh, and I don't know, I wasn't actually petrified bizarrely enough, I just thought, oh my goodness, this is so significant. I sprinted out through props, um, and I was just kind of a bit adrenalined up, but then, um, you know, I'm sure as like everyone else, as we began getting news, as we were all huddled out in the car park of, you know, the cathedral collapsing, people finding things that you don't want to be finding. Um, Mum and Dad's, my family home is in Dallington, so that, that had already um, been really munted in the first quake, but hearing that that was back to square one, um, that's when kind of reality sunk in and I was just really upset. We were on air and we were talking to a wee girl and it was about, she was doing something nice like providing water for somebody I think and this was in the course of the conversation on air. There was a significant aftershock I think from memory it was around about a 5.6 and our studio shook and the wee girl just started screaming and in that instant I felt like she was my daughter and I just wanted to cuddle her and put my arms around her and keep her safe. And I just remember saying, it's all right, sweetheart, it's all right, sweetheart, it's all right, sweetheart. And then I got very emotional. I started sort of crying myself on the air. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is embarrassing. But I just felt very, very paternal towards her and just wanted to take care of her. And, um, and that's when it really hit home. Even talking about it now, I feel emotional because I just think those, those times, um, oh, they, they are, they are gruelling, you know, they are actually gruelling because the memories come flooding back. Um, everybody else ran outside, but I didn't, because I didn't think anything of it. So I just sat down, um, cleaned up the makeup room a little bit, because everything had fallen everywhere. Um, picked up the wigs, as you do, uh, and sat down and continued to watch Home and Away. Um, until um, some inspectors came through, and this would have been a good half an hour after the earthquake had hit. And um, yeah, some inspectors came in and were yelling at me, asking why I'm still in here, and I was like, well, I had, I had no idea you had to get out, you know, because for me it wasn't like in the movies, you know, <laughs> I was expecting it to be something like in the movies where, um, I don't know, where just everything will come falling down and, and the roof comes collapsing in as, as it did in different parts of Christchurch, but it didn't here, so I thought, ah, oh. and I just thought, oh, everybody was outside, I didn't think anything of it, it was just bizarre and it was all a blur so yeah I just arrived here in Christchurch um, fresh faced from Auckland ready to start a new job and February 22nd I guess that was my welcome to Christchurch. My boss just said look uh, there's smoke coming from a building over there which we now know was CTV just go up set up there there's a camera going there meet them there and just do live broadcasts or whatever they need so essentially I became stationed at this Latimer Square at CTV uh, for about the next 10 hours. Situation that it seems as though the fire is obviously still burning that's, uh, uh, and the, the emergency services have things under control there. They're doing their absolute best. You've got rural fire officers who've been brought in as well to help fight this fire. The lady pointed down to the square and said the cathedral's come down. So we rushed straight into there and what confronted us was we saw people streaming out, um, some injured, some hurt, some many on cell phones going to Victoria Park while the liquefaction came up and we kept on going. There were rescues happening on one side, there were cars crushed on the other and when we got to the square there were just people milling around who'd come out of buildings and didn't really know what to do.
but then I didn't realise the extent of what we were going to go through that day. I thought, well, everybody survived the last September quake, it'll be very similar. Um, of course, absolutely petrified uh, as the, it was shaking, but nothing prepared me for what we were going to encounter that day, for what we saw that day, for what we had to report on. It was probably the hardest day of my professional career. A lot of people have said to me, you know, was it hard working because we came into work, but I actually found it quite cathartic and I, I felt it was a real privilege to be doing the job we're doing. It's at times like that, you see the very best of humanity out of the greatest of adversity and um, we saw that, you know, people wanted to share their stories and we were just a conduit for people to actually tell their story and I, I felt very privileged, very, very blessed to be part of that whole process. And we went past the side door of the cathedral and I could, saw, I could see it was open and I said to my uh, camera operator, let's go in, the door's open. To see it destroyed was pretty amazing. I couldn't believe I was inside there. I quickly did a piece to camera, I talked to the camera, and then I stood back and I let the camera operator uh, film it. My heart was pounding, I wanted to get out, but I knew we needed the pictures. A lot of people have said to me, you were stupid going into the cathedral. Even my mum said, what were you doing in there? But if it happened again, I'd make the, the same decision. Did I feel safe in there? Yes. Would I go back in? Yes. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Often when you're in a studio behind cameras, you forget about the awesome people that are on the other side of the TV watching the show and to be able to get out there to those schools that aren't doing so well and the welfare centres where kids are terrified. And just by showing up and hanging out, they, you leave and they're smiling. Like That's a real honour to be able to do things like that. So we've grown quite close to everyone in Christchurch because of that. I I don't think anything prepared me for what we were going to be reporting on and as I stood just over there, as I stood reporting and telling people that bodies were coming out, as I stood and saw this triage centre stand, set up here in um, Latimer Square, I guess I thought, oh, well, maybe a couple of people have died, and I think that's the way I coped with it. I thought, okay, it, it can't be that bad. And I remember the absolute shock, and when we were interviewing the Prime Minister here in um, Latimer Square on the six o'clock news, and he said that there were at least 65 deaths, and this was only about six o'clock at night. And I thought to myself, oh no, he's got it wrong. Surely it can't be 65 people, because nothing prepared me. As I was reporting in front of that CTV building, Nothing prepared me for the fact that there were 115 people that would never come out of that building alive. You know, really very emotional stories came out, but I felt like there was this tremendous sense of commonality, that we're, there was no degrees of separation. We all knew that everybody had experienced that same thing, so that's incredibly bonding and heart-wrenching at the same time. And of course, the more the stories came out about people that had perished in the earthquake, then your thoughts of you know, damage to your home quickly evaporated because you know, the loss of life is, you can never recover from that really. I honestly don't believe you're ever the same person if you lose a loved one. So my thoughts certainly were with the families that had lost mums and dads and brothers and sisters and children and, and that's oh, just, just too unbearable for words. Big ups to those people that worked in the media and did have to go straight into those hard places because Although we were working, you know, side by side during the past couple of years in the media in Christchurch, their job was to really deal with the rough stuff, whereas our job was to put a pretty silver lining on things. So I just look up to them as kind of career inspirations and know that we all kind of have this thing in our hearts, this big, real story that will stick with our jobs and our skill sets for the rest of our lives. And sometimes I just feel like you just feel like you wish Aftershock or Earthquakes was a person because you just want to punch them in the face, you know? Or you just want to say, come on, mate, you know, um, not here. Um, but, oh, gosh, I, I wish it was a person. That, but, um, I mean, that's Mother Nature. I think I'm a very different person now than I was in the days after the earthquake. Um, I suffered quite major post-traumatic stress after the earthquake from what I saw on that day. I've, I think everybody in Christchurch has suffered it to some extent and um, I don't want to compare what I've seen to what those rescuers saw which was far worse. Um, but the aftershock sent me into an absolute spin, um, just the fear that, that rippled through you. But I felt enormously proud of, of everybody that's been through the earthquake. If you can come out the other side and um, have a sense of humour and, and you know, and take care of others. I think that's been very important to me and that's what I've loved to see, that everybody did care.
it showed me the true spirit of the Christchurch people. Um, just seeing people come together and helping each other. Everybody I talked to was like, why do you stay in Christchurch? What is in Christchurch? And I think, to be honest, it's the people and it's the bravery and it's our community. There is no other city in the world that has rallied around. Uh, it's the people that need it the most. And I think um, that in itself is the very reason why I've chosen to stay here. This was one of the easiest stories for me to tell from a television sense. The disaster was right there. All we had to do was film, and everything that we were filmed was gold television. The people that we interviewed, it's what you really dream of. Yes, it was a disaster, and it was devastating, and there were people killed, but from a business sense, from a television sense, from a journalist's sense, this was the most exciting story of my career. It's a disaster, and we had to get the news out to the rest of the country and to the world as to what happened.